linear congruence equations. So this is somewhat similar to linear equations. A linear congruence equation is a congruence equation of the form a times x is congruent to b modulo n, where a, b, and x are all integers. I hope that you are not uh, forgetting that point when we are talking about modulo arithmetic. We apply them only on the set of integers. It has a solution in the set of integers if and only if there are integers x that satisfy the congruence equation. So before we step into solving linear congruence equations, let us recall how we did it in ordinary linear equations in the set of real numbers. So let's say, for example, let us solve 5x minus 7 is equal to 13. What is x? The way we used to do it, when this was first introduced to you way back in grade 7, junior high school. You add 7 on both sides. Addition property of equality. Negative 7 plus 7 is 0. 23 plus 7 is 20. Oh, 13 plus 7. I, I mean 13 plus 7 is 20. 5x is equal to 20. Okay, definition of additive identity. And then, we multiply 1 over 5 to both sides of our equation, and our uh, reasoning for that is the multiplication property of equality, and then 5 times 1 fifth, or 1 fifth times 5 is 1. 5 times 1 over 5 is 4, multiplicative inverse, and x is equal to 4, our definition of the multiplicative identity. So you can now understand why I devoted a video on multiplicative inverse and additive inverse under addition modulo n. And along the way, we also discover that we have a multiplicative identity for multiplication modulo n. And the same for uh, addition, we have an additive inverse. In working on linear congruence equations, we are interested in looking for the value of x that will satisfy our congruence equation. But then again, we must pay attention to these properties. Reflexivity, symmetry, transitivity, additivity, multiplicitivity, and along the way, we discover this. All of this for modular arithmetic. Find the solution to 3x minus 4 is congruent to 1 modulo 7 in the set 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So which of this, which among these integers is a solution to our congruence equation? So we add 4. 4 is congruent to 4 modulo 7, so we can add 4 on both sides of our congruence equation. Our property for that is the property of additivity. 3x plus 0 is congruent to 5 modulo 7, additive inverse. 3x is congruent to 5 modulo 7. So we shall now multiply something to 3x. What must we multiply to 3x? Uh, to both sides of our congruence equation so that we can cancel that 3, okay? So what is the multiplicative inverse of 3? What do you think? Okay, so I am showing this, this table so that you would know the multiplicative inverses of our uh, integer elements 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So when a is 1, the multiplicative inverse of 1 is 1 because 1 times 1 is congruent to 1 modulo 7. How about this? When a is 2, what is the multiplicative inverse of 2? Well, it's this one. It's 4. Why? Because 2 times 4 is 8. And when you divide, when, you, when we divide 8 by, by 7, 
So, we have a remainder of 1. That is what we are looking for. This one here is the remainder when this product is divided by 7. So, we now go to 3. Okay, look at this. What is the multiplicative inverse of 3? It's 5. Okay, why is that? Well, 3 times 5 is 15. And when we divide 15 by when we divide 15 by 7, it has a remainder that is equal to 1. That is what we are looking for. So the multiplicative inverse of 3 under multiplication modulo 7 is 5. So that's why we are multiplying 5 to both sides of our congruence equation. Okay, so what is 5 times 3 now? 5 times 3 is congruent to 1 modulo 7. But what about 5 times 5? What is 5 times 5? 5 times 5 is 25. We, we divide 25 by 7. And the remainder is 4. So that's why, look at that. 5 times 5 modulo 7 is congruent to 4. Look at that. Congruent to 4 modulo 7. So x is congruent to 4 modulo 7. So our choice for x, our choice for x is this one. In this set, is this one because the only element among them that is congruent to 4 is 4. Okay, so let us double check it. Let us double check it for x is equal to 4. Three times four is twelve. Twelve minus four is eight. Is eight congruent to one modulo seven? Okay, so let us put a question mark. Well, yes, because when you divide eight by seven, the remainder is one.